about Taiwan in a second. I'm wondering if you could comment on that first. Well, you know, I think one of the things we have to keep in mind is, yes, absolutely, there's a long history of a kind of staunch anti-communist faction in U.S. politics being particularly sensitive to the need to kind of take care of Taiwan. But they have been at least supplemented, and I would say really overtaken, by another set of voices which say, look, Taiwan is the best example of a country that did exactly what the U.S. was asking during the Cold War. It was, under Chiang Kai-shek, a single-party, right-wing, authoritarian state with tons of human rights abuses and all that stuff, and it made a peaceful and bloodless transition to full-on liberal democracy all, you know, all by itself, even with all of this um, overhang of tension with the People's Republic of China and so on, Taiwan managed to become a democracy, and it's functioning as a democracy. So for a lot of us, I think one of the reasons that the U.S. needs to attend to Taiwan and to be to recognize the value of Taiwan is that it is an example, one of a shrinking number of examples in the world today, of the possibility of a country bringing its people peace, freedom, prosperity, democracy in a very um, stable, you know, sort of gradual and positive way. So that's another reason that a lot of the uh, folks advising Trump and also some who are not advising Trump have said, you know, we need to continue to take care of Taiwan. It's not just about the economics. It's not just about uh, the anti-China. It's, for, for many people, primarily about a democracy, you know, a country that did what we asked. And can we, we can't can just we? pull the rug out from under him now. Hey, it's Sam Cedar. Why don't you uh, subscribe to this channel? You can do so right, uh, right over here. Uh, so over. Subscri subscribe.